Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another episode of Fitz Ruby Cast featuring Dawn of War 2 Retribution. Today we're hanging out on Leviathan Hive, a truly alien feeling map. We're looking over on the capillary towers and I guess biomass pools that are kind of sitting around on this Tyranniform map and with all the red spores and everything floating around here, it always just makes me feel like it would be unhealthy generally for me to even be walking around anywhere on this map. Leviathan Hive. So uh, before we get started, let me say once again, we've got the signups going for my end of year one-on-one -on -one double elimination tournament. That'll be happening on Friday the 30th, so there's still plenty of time to get signed up. So far, we've had some pretty solid interest. Uh, the forums on game replays have all the information you need. I'll link that on the description of this page, of course. And uh, that's about it for that. I encourage everyone of any skill level, go ahead and sign up. It'll be lots of fun. We should have some good games, lots of fun people, so on and so forth. Let's go ahead and take a look at our players. On the blue side, we have Toilele as our Imperial Guard Lord General. And on the red side, we've got Harry Potter with his nice Gryffindor color scheme over here. Uh, both of these players, by the way, have already signed up for the tournament and will be playing. So the Farseer versus the Imperial Guard on Leviathan Hive. So let's see how this plays out. Should be a pretty good match, I think. Both of these players are pretty fun to watch. Uh, and generally just good all-around players. So Toyolele bringing on his second squad of Imperial Guardsmen while Pata also playing two squads of Guardians. So we have Guardsmen versus Guardians so far right now. And uh, Toyolele getting that second squad of Guardsmen, I guess, for some early cap potential instead of building that Sentinel first uh, and getting straight up there and adding some harassment to his maneuvers right now. So... Other than that, pretty standard cap orders, everyone just grabbing those basic points, and uh, with Leviathan Hive, of course, you just kind of have this big pile of points right in front of your base that you kind of have to defend. There's really only a few contested points, and that's the two in the center here, the center VP and the center power. Everything else is pretty much just pretty easy to defend right in front of your base, and uh, it's just one player pushing into the other side, so whoever tends to win that first engagement kind of gets stuck trying to defend those power nodes. So we can see Pata uh, not deciding to grab a third squad yet. You can see uh, has popped both of his power nodes and uh, dropped a generator as well, probably going for a fast shuriken against uh, the Imperial Guard force. And we have the Sentinel starting off the festivities, charging right into the cover, breaking all that down and getting a quick stomp on these Guardians, knocking them all down. Uh, the Guardians are pecking away at that heavy infantry armor that the Sentinel does have, but uh, the Guardsmen are now there to reinforce and add some repair to that uh, injured Sentinel. So the first Guardian squad is getting pretty low, does have to fall back. Uh, the Farseer is now moving in from behind. Uh, looks like she dropped a guide on herself right there. Oh, and a nice looking special attack dropping down just as those Guardsmen were trying to get that turret up. So. Uh, Looks like a sergeant dropped in in the nick of time. That squad was looking pretty hurt right there. But uh, the Farseer is taking quite a bit of damage herself now and is going to have to retreat. Actually was perilously low there, down to about 30 HP, uh, just barely getting out of there. So uh, the second Guardsman squad instead is going to go ahead and add that turret. And we can see Pata has already brought that Shuriken Cannon onto the field. So uh, with, those two, with those two power nodes and the generator, that Shuriken Cannon comes onto the field just after the first engagement. So very good timing for that. Uh, unfortunately, though, I like this setup that uh, Toyolele has. Despite that Shuriken being on the field, uh, both the LAS turret and the Sentinel will be able to fire uh, without being suppressed, so some pretty reasonable DPS despite being under Shuriken Cannon fire for Toyolele. Uh, the Farseer is coming out, but she's still a bit too low. I think she rushed a bit out there uh, accidentally before healing up at base and uh, had to pretty much just retreat right away. Uh, the Guardsmen getting a little low there on HP, but uh, no big deal because they're just there for repair support. Toilele managed to knock out both the Generator and the Node over there, and Pata has decided to go up and fill up the, uh, the northern power farm over here on this side. So a uh, Guardian Shield going up over here, and uh, looks like battle equipment has been upgraded on at least one of those squads. And uh, the Shuriken hiding in safety behind that shield. These Guardsmen getting very low. They need to get out of there. Oh, there they go. Uh, I was afraid he didn't see that for a split second. 
And uh, the second squad of guardsmen also getting pushed back by the double guardians over there. So it uh, looks like Toyoleli is splitting his power between his two nodes, uh, not investing full in on either side. And the note goes up right before the Lord General is able to decap that power right there. So Toyoleli makes a face and uh, decides that in exchange he's just going to go ahead and stomp on the on that guardian energy shield the sentinel just charging in there with reckless disregard for that shield kind of a drawback of course when fighting uh, imperial guard is those shields aren't going to stay up very long so long as uh, that sentinel's on the field a nice looking flank here by the lord general getting behind the shuriken cannon and uh, going to be able to disrupt it and prevent it from firing giving that sentinel time to move up along with these guardsmen and uh, put some pressure on these Guardians right now. The Lord General is getting pretty low uh, and decides to turn around and engage the Guardsmen, but that's giving the Shuriken Cannon time to set back up and a uh, bit of a bit of a kind of a tough choice there. The Lord General was so low that if he had decided to chase that Shuriken Cannon, he may have fallen to the fire of the dual Guardian squads right there. So uh, Toy Lele had a, had a nice little triple cap there early game, but uh, Pot has managed to bring it back, and uh, Toy Lele still sitting pretty nice on about a 150 DP advantage right now. Again, that Sentinel crushing the shield and getting the stun in on that Shuriken Cannon, uh, but those Guardsmen aren't going to be enough to scare it off, and both, both the Eldar squads split out of there. Uh, Harry Potter now turning that triple cap right back against uh, Toy Lele as both players work their way into Tier 2. Uh, so far, uh, just the three squads for both players and uh, pretty naked commanders for both sides. <clears throat> so the Sentinel's just been doing some constant harassing on those Guardian squads. And uh, meanwhile, the Farseer's just kind of been running around and harassing Guardsmen wherever she can and fighting for map control. Uh, the Guardsmen and the Lord General may have been able to deal with that Farseer, but now Guardians are also on the field getting ready. And oh, special attack knocking that Lord General off of the point and preventing him from decapping that DP. So he decides he's going to go in and get into a little melee brawl with these Guardians. And uh, meanwhile, the Farseer interrupting those Guardsmen, preventing any sort of range damage right there. Uh, battle equipment popping at the last second and luckily Toy Lele saw that real quick and got out of there. Oh, but a nice looking grenade right on top of that Lord General. The Farseer uh, looks like she's just barely not going to be able to finish him off. But uh, meanwhile Toy Lele's managed to capture the top victory point. And uh, both players now have tier 2 units coming onto the field. Harry Potter's got some Wraith Guards while Toy Lele's building his Chimera. So that Chimera should be a nice, nice way to keep uh, keep his guardsmen on the field, but he's going to have to be very cautious uh, against those Wraith Guard. Of course, the Lord General will be able to engage them in melee so long as that Shuriken Cannon's out of the way and uh, keep them from firing too much. But uh, ultimately, those Wraith Guard can pretty much counter everything in Toy Lele's armor, uh, or arsenal right now. Oh, we have a Farseer Gate now dropping onto the field, uh, and a cloak being used already on these guardians. Uh, which are charging in there. Oh, and dropping a cloak grenade right on top of that commissar for that squad and took out several members. They do have to just kind of instantly retreat there and uh, get out of danger's way right there. So it uh, looks like the Chimeras managed to get behind this uh, shuriken cannon and the Wraith Guards are kind of slowly plodding their way up there. I'm not sure why Harry... Uh, Pada has not chosen to get the Warlock on top of that Wraith Guard squad. Kind of speed it up there a little bit. It's just so painfully slow uh, without that Warlock. Oh, so the Wraith Guard are spotted by the Lord General and he's just charging on in there. He's He knows exactly what he wants to do. He loses a, a member of his retinue right there, but uh, now has a Commissar coming in as well. Has to be careful engaging that Farseer in melee though, because it's fine keeping that Lord General in melee, but against an actual melee commander, uh, you're likely to lose those extra retinue members that cost quite a bit to reinforce. So Apata's looking pretty good right now. Uh, managed to pretty much even out that VP advantage that uh, Toyolele had early and now has this uh, excellently placed warp gate right here. It's not really easily visible from anywhere and uh, can cloak these units and speed them up and send them just about anywhere he needs in, this, in these three directions on the map. 
Uh, the Farsi are now sporting the Doombringer Armor of Fortune and Ghost Helm right now. Oh man, and that Sentinel just barely taking a cloaked Wraithguard barrage right there. Oh my goodness. Uh, that was very fortunate for Toy Lele not to have lost that right there. And uh, we can see a little chat exchange right there uh, acknowledging that fact. Meanwhile, Toy Lele is bringing uh, Manticore onto the field. Oh, and that those Wraith Guards just start hammering those Imperial Guardsmen, just kind of splatting, splatting them two or three at a time. Oh, and the summary execution being used, you see, I don't use, see that used very much, but it's very useful, especially with the Chimera on the field. You can kind of just fall back, uh, get some ground between you and whatever's giving you problems, and then just hit that summary execution and uh, bring your troops immediately back on the field with, uh, with uh, some renewed vigor there. So the Lord General kind of harassing some guardsmen over there. Oh, and the first Manticore strike coming down. Uh, scaring off that Farseer and the Shuriken Cannon didn't really do too much damage, but looked like it was a nice little missile spread right there. And meanwhile, uh, Harry Potter is still maintaining map control, kind of ticking away here. Uh, and just constantly harassing the Lord General with these guards, uh, guardians over here. Guardians and guardsmen. Uh, I, that was the first time I kind of tripped that up, I think. Pretty good so far. Oh no! I come up just in time to see... Guardsmen getting annihilated by Wraith Guards. They both have plasma rifles, so they will be able to put some hurt on those Wraith Guards, but right now they're just taking some damage in, uh, in a pretty brutal manner. Oh my goodness, I kind of moved away there, sorry about that, and uh, just as a creeping barrage went down, it looks like it was a bit premature if he had kind of fired that just a second later. Uh, that would have done some serious damage, maybe even taken out those Wraith Guards. Again, we saw these Guardsmen kind of fall back right there, get away from the Farseer, and then drop the uh, Commissar Summary Execution, and uh, turn right around and start shooting at her once again. Uh, Guardian Shield going up here, but uh, that Bulldozer decides that it is just not going to matter. A grenade dropped there real quick. Uh, probably he was hoping that those Guardsmen were going to pop out and maybe get, catch some models, but he just drops that grenade, then gets the heck out of there. And uh, ultimately now, once again, we see some cloaked units running around, trying to get a nice looking flank on this uh, Sentinel. And that Sentinel is in a lot of trouble. It took a lot of damage right there. And oh my goodness, it does go down. That's it for that Sentinel. Uh, nice play by Harry Potter. Toy Lele wastes no time in spotting that, uh, spotting that warp gate and destroying it with a Manticore barrage. But Pata is not dissuaded at all and drops a second one not far from its very location. Pata's also brought a Falcon onto the field, which uh, now with both sides having transport and the Falcon being able to deal with that Chimera pretty well, uh, Toy Lily really doesn't have an answer for that uh, vehicle right yet. And it is now cloaked and moving in at point blank range, and there they go, unleashing a volley of uh, shurikens and Falcon pulse lasers into there. Meanwhile, the Farseers already in melee. Uh, you can see, oh my goodness, an excellent special attack knocking all those guardsmen down from both squads. My goodness, uh, an excellent attack from Tata, uh, striking from the shadows with the help of that uh, Farseer gate. Again, those guardian falling back, using the execution to cancel the retreat and turn around and fire on that Farseer. Uh, excellent use of that so far this game. But uh, so far this engagement, oh my goodness, the Farseer is walking through a Manticore barrage and just barely managed to hang on uh, with about 18 HP there through uh, through that barrage. You can see the Farseer has also switched out uh, the Ghost Helm for the Spirit Stones. And uh, with these with these two war gears, the Armor of Fortune and the Spirit Stone, she rarely has to retreat. Uh, we can see the Wraith Guard are garrisoned inside of that Falcon, and you can see uh, they were clearly not meant for that. You can see their big old heads kind of sticking out of the Falcon there. But uh, meanwhile, uh, during that battle, Pata managed to go ahead and uh, capture all the VPs once again, putting Toyolele at about 100 VP disadvantage right now, uh, with the triple cap still in Pata's favor, so Toyolele needs to hurry up and do something about that. Meanwhile, the Wraith Guards hop back out of the Falcon and uh, are just shredding some power real quick. Uh, still with no Warlock, I suppose, with the... Uh, oh, a Manticore Strike! Oh my goodness! Uh, destroying the Wraith Guards and the Falcon! Oh my goodness! That was a brutal strike. Uh, that was devastating to Pata. Yeah, I think he just wanted to stay in there and kill that last generator, but it did cost him severely. Oh my goodness. Uh, 
Hana now moving into tier 3. Hopefully some uh, tier 3 Eldar magic to replace those two lost squads there from that mana core strike. Oh man. Uh, Toya Lele is now returning the favor and uh, destroying one of Tata's power farms. Uh, Toya Lele has plenty of power right now, but so does Pata really. Uh, Pata has a nice pile of wreck too. Uh, looking at the numbers, probably won't be far from an avatar if he can get some more power back up as soon as he hits tier 3. They may have us here, sir. So uh, the Farseer charging in, uh, casting some spells here, and uh, the Guardsmen just decide they're going to go ahead and get out of there right away. Uh, nice looking grenade there on retreat, taking out several Guardsmen, but uh, ultimately there goes that summary execution once again. Uh, keeping those Guardsmen on the field at all times is what Toya lele has been doing, and it's been working out very well for him so far. Uh, unfortunately, I just don't think uh, without without the uh, singing spear, the Farseer just poses no threat to this Chimera at all. And uh, unfortunately, <laughs> it looks like the Shuriken Cannon managed to scare off and push back that Lord General on that side of the map. Uh, once again, we're seeing a creeping barrage here, but unfortunately it didn't look like it hit anything, though. Uh, Ogren's now charging at these Guardians, and uh, the Farseer drops some Spirit Stones right there and charges out of battle. Uh, as I was saying, with the Armor of Fortune and the Spirit Stones, uh, being able to cast Fortune, having HP regen and a heal, that Farseer is pretty much never going to have to fall back on the field so long as she stays out of immediate trouble. So uh, a couple more gates have gone up. You can see... Uh, a gate has gone up, is going up right now down here by the bottom BP, and there's one up at uh, Harry Potter's base as well. Unfortunately, I think Toy Lele might have seen that get built there right at the last second. And uh, but Toy Lele is down to under 100 BPs right now. Harry Potter's just been using that Eldar speed to constantly. Oh yes, Toy Lele did see that gate and dropped a uh, prompt Manticore strike right on top of that. Uh, the Lord General uh, equipped with his sniper rifle and carapace armor, which prevents suppression. Uh, the Ogrens tried to charge at those Guardians, but uh, unfortunately they managed to get inside of that webway gate and uh, off to safety they were whisked. So the Chimera scaring off the Farseer. You can see the Farseer is just uh, constantly using fleet of foot and jetting around from one side of the map to the other and constantly keeping the pressure on these VPs. Toy Lily's doing his damnedest to try to keep these VPs from ticking away, but uh, Pato's sitting here on a pretty nice 250 point VP lead right now. Toy Lily's really going to have to tighten it up despite getting that excellent mana core strike and dropping the squad and the Falcon there. Uh, he needs to try to focus on the map control from here on and uh, really keep those VPs in his favor. So we can see we got the refractor field up for the Lord General and the Chimera's coming in to provide some support. That Farseer's in a bit of trouble, but it looks like all oh, the Ogrens are suppressed and uh, after dropping that uh, field, it looks like the uh, Lord General just doesn't have enough energy for his uh, suppression counter. And those Ogrens are just going to have to get out of there. I forget what that's called. Uh, the Stand Firm ability, that's what that's called. I just know it uh, nullifies suppression for nearby squads. And that's with the Carapuce armor, of course. Let's get to it. So an Avatar is on the field, and a second... <laughs> it looks like Toy Lele's just not going to play the Farseer gate game. And Harry Potter doesn't care, he's just going to keep putting them back up and fight for that map control. Uh, Toya Lele's trying to get that triple cap back, ahead, but an avatar is on the field, and uh, oh no, there's a sink kill on a single Guardsman. I just feel like that's not even worth it uh, for that avatar to be dropping sink kills on Guardsman at this point. Oh, we have a Wailing Doom, but of course Toya Lele's right there and manages to see it and gets out of uh, gets out of harm's way pretty quickly right there. A D cannon's also been brought onto the field, but oh no, here comes a creeping barrage right on top of all those Elder range squads, and it catches three out of the four. The Shuriken Cannon managed to get out of there and should be able to set up and uh, scare off these guardsmen. Uh, the two plasma guardsmen will actually be doing some pretty reasonable damage to that uh, avatar. You can see just melting away a lot of its HP right now. Pada hops out of that warp gate with a with the Farseer, and uh, which is now upgrading to the armor of a Surian, which gives the time field ability. 
uh, which is pretty nasty tier 3 ability in this game. And uh, oh, unfortunately that Manticore Strike was just out of range of that D cannon, which uh, kind of fired right into that pile of guardsmen. A singularity going off as well, but a bit too late. They had already run to safety and hit inside of that Chimera Transport, which has been invaluable so far. There goes the time field. Uh, the Avatar is closing in. Of course, the Farseer can run through it herself without any effect. And uh, the D Cannon and Guardians all moving in on this Chimera right now. Now uh, the Ogrens took the top VP and uh, probably going to try to find that warp gate up there, I'm sure. And uh, meanwhile, we have the Guardians moving, or the Guardsmen hopping out here. Oh, and another Wailing Doom toy lately needs. Oh my goodness! Oh, Guardsmen everywhere! Oh, that was brutal to watch. I don't know how many Guardsmen died. Of course, they're going to reinforce three at a time right back out of that Chimera. There's just an infinite supply of those little men in there today. And, uh, wow, that was a nasty whale in Doom. Uh, the D Cannon's now set up over there. And, uh, <laughs> you can see, actually, uh, Toy Lily says he was trying to find that Farseer gate up there, and that's what took his attention off of the micro down at the southern battle for that brief second that was so critical. So, oh, we have another Wailing Doom. Oh, and a time field on top of it. Oh, my goodness. Even more Guardsmen, and I think he took out a whole squad this time. There's just one left. Oh, it does manage to get reinforced there at the end. And uh, a second Manticore is now on the field, but hanging out dangerously close to this Avatar. That, uh, that Chimera, oh, takes a shot in the rear armor from that D Cannon at maximum range. Wow. Uh, I'm not sure if that D Cannon was guided or what. It actually looks like it was, uh... It fired at the Chimera right here, and it's ranges back here, so that might have been a guided shot that finishes off that Chimera. The two Manticores are now in very dangerous position, uh, facing off against this Avatar right now. Wailing Doom not quite finishing that one off. Uh, Harry Potter decides to pull that Avatar back, doesn't want to risk anything. I honestly don't think Toy Lely could deal with it right now, and uh, Potter could just take the map. But uh, deciding to play it safe, uh, doesn't want to lose the advantage that he has right now. Pata decides to pull the Avatar back, and he's now bringing a second Falcon on the field. And uh, meanwhile, oh, a nice looking Singularity, taking out one of those Ogrens. Uh, they dropped the med pack that they were given earlier, but uh, I don't think they're going to be able to stand up to this Avatar on their own right now. And we'll probably have to get out of there. So... Hada's been doing an excellent job at controlling the map. That Avatar and D Cannon clearly paying off in Tier 3 for him. Uh, those two Wailing Dooms right there just caused such severe damage to those Guardsmen, and uh, with the help of that D Cannon shot at the end, managed to take out that Chimera as well, which kind of just sat in there. Those were two perfectly timed uh, Wailing Dooms, as Toya Lely must have been uh, looking elsewhere to his Ogrens for a brief second. So, uh,. Just proof of how, how excellent that can work out when you catch your opponent off guard with it. The Falcon immediately gets that energy field upgraded and is going, going to be one of the most notoriously difficult vehicles to take out this game. And uh, Toy Lely just trying to hold on. He's managed to hold on to two of the VPs so far and uh, decap the third. So bringing the VP difference down to just a less than 100 VPs now. So he's still very much in this game. With these two Manticores, he should be able to hold map so long as he can keep those VPs in his favor. The only problem with Manticores, of course, is that they're good at holding map and not necessarily pushing the map. So after losing that Chimera, he has a lot of uh, investment in these defensive Manticore strikes uh, to, to hold these VPs, but he really has no way of keeping himself on the field without that Chimera right now. Uh, the Lord General's kind of just haplessly charging into that Falcon. He doesn't really care. He just needs to keep these VPs in his favor. And uh, meanwhile, two Guardsmen squads hanging out down there. Toy Lely did repurchase the one that he had lost. And uh, the Lord General looking pretty brutalized. Oh, and a D cannon shot way from the back there. Uh, taking him out here at the end. Uh, another singularity going down. I don't think those Ogrens are going to be able to take that VP back, and I think that's just going to be it. Uh, with a triple cap happening right now in, uh, in Pata's favor. You can see these two Plasma Guardsmen still doing some nice damage to that Avatar, but uh, still not quite managing to hold the map. There's the GG from Toy Lely. Uh, Pata kind of dropped his a little early there, but I think that it's been kind of some playful chat back and forth here, so no big deal. Here comes one more Wailing Doom. I want to see it. 
Oh, but the match ends, and uh, the Guardsmen look like they were getting out of there anyways. So uh, that about sums it up right here, is this time field with that Wailing Doom right there uh, kind of just devastated Toyolele's forces. Oh, I like this, uh, this one lone Guardsman here kind of hanging out in the air, and that's the shot you want to see. That sums it up. Uh, great play by both sides. Just excellent Eldar map control uh, from Harry Potter. Toy Lely had some excellent plays as well, but just couldn't quite hold the map there at the end. Uh, losing that Chimera, I think, kind of did him in. He really needed to hold that map. I think if he had held those VPs, uh, the Mana Cores, of course, would have prevented any captures of that. But once that second Falcon in the Avatar came on, without the help of his Chimera, he was out of luck. So anyways, that's the game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. That was a pretty fun game if you ask me. And uh, of course, as I mentioned early, both of these players will be playing in the tournament later on next week. And I urge everyone who plays in solo to go ahead and sign up for that tournament. Anyways, this is Red Rupee. Uh, catch you guys next time.